Blank processing unit. There's two sets of initials typically used, and you know what I'm talking about, CPU and GPU. Central processing unit and graphics processing unit. Now it may sound as if a simple explanation can tell you the difference between center and graphics, but there's actually a fairly significant difference between the two. Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today on GameRanks, we ask the question, CPUs versus GPUs, how do they affect video games? Okay, so the ideal, obviously, is to have a game run at 60 frames per second or higher. So that means generating an image 60 times per second, showing you what's going on in the game. That includes the positions of objects, their textures, various shaders, light sources, and effects. But everything going on in that scene also needs to have some sort of logic to it. NPCs of various types need to have an artificial intelligence algorithm, not necessarily the most complex if you've ever watched our video on artificial intelligence, but still, there's gotta be something going on. Objects have to have physics. There's also non-rendered objects like hitboxes, as well as everything that has to run in order for collision detection, for instance, to actually work. Those paying attention noticed I separated those two things into two different categories, and that is going to help us significantly in explaining what CPU GPUs and GPUs do. Now the first category I was talking about, positions of objects, lighting, effects, shaders, textures, etc., is essentially what the GPU handles. The better the GPU you have, the more polygons can be displayed at a time. Certain shaders are only capable by certain generations of card, and also the graphics card has an impact on how high of resolution the textures to any object in the game can be. Now various shaders can be added to specific objects or even used as a filter over the entire image, and that is something that is usually handled by the GPU. I mean, it's not impossible to do it with software, but if something can be done using hardware, it's usually done better. So when a game has a very specific look to it that you might liken to a, a photo filter on some app that you might upload photos with, if indeed you do that, that is the graphics card, as well as a lot of glowing effects effects, reflections, water, all of these types of things that are manipulating the visual properties of an object being rendered. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm kind of conflating graphics card with GPU here, but the GPU itself is a chip on the graphics card. The reason I think that it's fine to conflate graphics card and GPU is that you wouldn't install a GPU yourself on its own and that be that. It just isn't how that typically works. I'm not saying nobody's ever done it, but generally we look at it as buying a graphics card and not buying a GPU. Where one could say the GPU does the artistic work of the scenery, one could also say the CPU does the organizational work of the in-game world. There's no such thing as an image if there's nothing in the image. I mean, I guess you could make a case that something blank is still an image, but that's very semantic and I don't want to get into it. Objects are made of polygons, and polygons are made of faces and vertices. Faces are actually the connection between three or more vertices, and the way you manipulate a solid object to bend is by moving the vertices. This is tracked, handled, and executed by the CPU. The CPU also keeps track of game logic, the if this then that of the world inside the game. It's responsible for generating particle systems, not necessarily rendering the effects that come along with it, but generating them, and handling the physics of all of the behavior of everything in the game world. When you aim towards another player in Fortnite, for instance, there's an invisible hitbox on them, and when you press the fire button, either using collision detection or a simple sort of on-off switch if you're actually aiming at the hitbox, which is actually a fascinating topic in of itself. If you go back a couple of years, we did a video on bullets and video games you may want to check out, but that's all handled by the CPU. So when looking at the GPU versus the CPU, we can draw some clear differences. And the thing is, is they are both kind of their own bottleneck in a way. If you have an amazing graphics card that can handle all of the intense effects, all of the shaders, all of the more heavyweight ideas, but have a CPU that isn't very fast at all, then it doesn't really matter how good the effects are, you get a couple of AI characters on screen and get a particle system or two going that in some way interacts with the environment and, well, your frame rate's gonna suck despite the amazing graphics card. The same goes for vice versa. If you have a crappy graphics card, it really doesn't matter how good your CPU is. To bring up those same heavyweight graphics ideas, 
most of them require hardware, because if you were to do them via software, you'd basically build a virtual machine that does those effects, which would then have to use the CPU, which is not good for those functions. Now, it's important to mention that there is some overlap between the two now. More recent GPUs include support for shaders that manipulate vertices, which is actually a CPU type operation, in that it actually completes matrix and vector computations. And while it's not necessarily as capable as a CPU with this, on these very specific operations, it's significantly faster than a CPU in this category of operation. This has led to researchers attempting to find uses of GPUs in non-graphical situations. This is why you often hear about GPUs being used to mine cryptocurrency, for example, as well as becoming an important component of deep learning neural networks. The operations that a neural network needs to do are much more similar to the matrix and vector operations that a GPU handles rather than the more broad geometry oriented problems that a CPU is typically good for. However, does that mean you would want to replace a CPU with a GPU? No, again, these are very specific operations and in the world of video games, which is ultimately what we are talking about, it's much more important to have both. The shaders that a GPU handles, even if it manipulates vertices, just don't do all of the broad operations that a CPU does. The physics, the collision detection, the transformation of objects, the movement. Within a game, a CPU has a very broad purpose. Now, more recently, we are seeing things like the accelerated processing unit, a sort of combo CPU and GPU on a single chipset. AMD started manufacturing these in 2011, and they do actually run with some good purposes, being able to share RAM, for instance, and both the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 run on APUs. However, the individual chips of a CPU and a GPU still exist on an APU. You. And although RAM sharing is absolutely a huge development, and there are certainly other innovations that make an APU a better idea, at least for somebody who's not intending to upgrade something like a console gamer, for instance, it ultimately boils down to having both chips, a CPU and a GPU, just on a single chip set. It doesn't change any of what works. It's just a more convenient and architecturally flexible way of managing these two types of chips. It still ultimately boils down down to everything visual is the GPU and everything logical is the CPU. But you have a lot more insight and that helps you understand much better how these things work and what they contribute to, individually speaking, in the game that you're playing. Now there is certainly more to talk about. I try to take a more broad approach so more people can understand it, but there are certainly more details that conversation might expose, and we invite you to do that in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.